Hi guys and welcome to this video, I'm Yuris here. Before you watch our next video from this tutorial series, there is an important change that is being introduced in 2018 in most cloud CentOS distributions, including DigitalOcean that we use for this tutorial series. And that change is, more often than not these days, SE Linux is enabled by default. So if you have no clue what is SE Linux, you might often end up in a situation where all file permissions are set correctly and still some processes cannot access those files. This video is about SE Linux or Security Enhanced Linux, an advanced security architecture integrated directly into kernel. SE Linux is making your workstation much more secure and it also provides a more advanced model for permission control. However, it requires a little bit of additional configuration since by default it is quite strict and it prohibits several things that makes perfect sense for our environment. So for example, it will be blocking Nginx attempts to connect to Node.js and to read files from user's home folder. And what we are about to do in the next videos of this course will not work in 2018 unless you follow the steps from this video and set up SE Linux permissions accordingly. So before we even start to work with SE Linux, let's check if it works for you, if it is enabled and it's enforcing its policies. Log into your host, preferably as root. I already did logged to my Nanogram IO host as root and run one simple command, which is get enforce right? So you run it and then it will print one of the values which can be enforcing, permissive or disabled. If it prints enforcing, like for me here, then SE Linux is enabled and enforcing its policies. This is the value that we want to get on our host. If it prints permissive, then SE Linux is technically enabled, but it doesn't enforce any policies. It just logs the violations of the policies into a separate log file. It is very useful. This mode is useful for debugging purposes. And finally, it can print disabled, then SE Linux is completely disabled for you, right? So if SE Linux is not in enforcing mode, then watch another video that I will put a link to in the description to this video and see how to enable it. For the sake of this video, I'm assuming that on your distribution, this get enforce command is printing enforcing. Now that we are sure that SE Linux is on, let's get started. The goal of SE Linux is to improve the security of a system and it does so by introducing an additional layer of permissions based on so-called policies. In a basic Linux permission model, files and directories have the owner and owning group. So if you type ls-l, you will see that information. Let me do that right now. And you see here the owner of a file is Yuri and it also belongs to the group that is called URI. Of course, those can be different. And for each individual file and folder, you can define permissions for this three categories of users, user, group, and everyone else, other, every other user who is not an owner and doesn't belong to the group that owns the file. For each permission class, you can decide if you want to allow them to read, write, and execute that file or folder. This collection of settings is known as mode of a file and this model of permissions is called DAC, discretionary access control, because access control is set at user's discretion. What SE Linux adds on top of that model is a notion of context of files, processes and users. Um, simplifying things a little bit, a context is the type for the file process and user and then based on that type SE Linux can tell, well, this type of a process is allowed to read this type of file. So how do you see that additional information? Let's look at our first info about SE Linux. Uh, context. You add flag uppercase Z to pretty much any command that deals with files, processes and tools. And in this case, I'll use it with LS. So let's see, here's the additional block information of information that appeared after I added Z flag. And this is exactly it. This is SE Linux context. It is made up of several parts. The first system U is the user. The second object R is the role. The third one user home underscore T is the type of a file. So in this case, I'm looking in my home directory in the users URI home directory. And the type of this file is user home underscore T. And the last one is S0. It's a SE Linux level. We will be most interested in this guy over here in the user home T in the type of a file. Let me show you the example of a different kind of a file. So I will take as an example, 
and I'll type ls minus z. The default nginx folder that was created when nginx was first installed, this is the default placeholder for nginx server. And it is in user share nginx html if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, all right. So now I printed the details of that folder with minus Z flag. And here you see that the types of those files are HTTPT sys content T. So SLinux knows specifically that, well, those files are meant to be served by a web server and web server is allowed to serve those files. The same technique with adding uppercase Z flag to the commands that are listing something also works with processes. So let's say ls uh, ps AUXZ, right? So I'm printing the processes with uppercase that flag. And then let's grab nginx out of that process list to see the type of nginx. All right, so here's running instances of nginx. Uh, there's just one running instance, obviously. And the type of this thing is here, here it is, httpdt. Right. So with all that information in place, as a Linux can now implement fine grain policies, like should web server read user home directories, in some systems, it makes perfect sense, like in our system. In other systems, this will be the last thing that you want to do. Or some more interesting policies, should the web server be able to connect to a mail server. So of course, in order to set this whole system up, we need to fine tune a couple of settings in SE Linux. So for example, SE Linux doesn't allow for HTTP servers, including Nginx, to connect to other systems through network. However, for our system, it makes just perfect sense to change these default settings, since Nginx will have to connect to Node.js to act as a reverse proxy. Luckily, changing this setting is very, very easy. So we will need to run the following command set s e bool, then minus p flag to persist your setting, and then http d can network connect and then pass on. So you're turning on this Boolean value and you're persisting it in the setting. So it will survive server reboot. Let's hit enter. It will take just a second and make sure that you're running it as root since you need root permissions to have the access to SE Linux policies. So now this value is set and SE Linux will know that it's okay to let Nginx to connect to Node.js, right? So there are many, many other Boolean settings in SE Linux and uh, we need to set one more in order for our system setup to work. Set as e bool and again minus p flag httpd enable home dears again setting that to on that will tell as linux that it will be fine for http server to read files from users home directories otherwise it will block the access the final thing to complete our little as a linux nginx setup is to set the proper as a linux file types to the statics files that we are going to serve on the previous step, we configured as a Linux to allow nginx to read files from user home folders, but that's not enough in itself. nginx will be only able to read the files of a type httpd sys content t, and this is exactly the type that we will set right now. So to do that, we will run a command chcon, which is change context, and we'll pass a couple of flags, minus r flag to mark that it is recursive, so it will apply to all the subfolders and uh, files. D flag says that we only are interested in the types of the files. We're not setting the whole context, just the type. And finally, pass HTTP D sys content T. So this is the type of a file that we want to set and pass the folder where you want to set them. And that's going to be in home, Yuri, easy IO and public. So this is the place where we're serving our static files from. And you should remember already how to check that this type of a file has indeed been applied, right? So we need to uh, type a command ls minus l and add a flag z, and then pass the pass to that folder. Let's hit enter. And as you see, all the files inside there having the type HTTPD sys content t, not the uh, user home t. And that pretty much is everything that you need to do in order to configure as a Linux to work with Nginx, just three steps. However, as a benefit, you're getting all the security improvements that as a Linux has to offer. 
Now let's do a really quick summary of what are the commands that you need to run in order to configure as a Linux on your system to work nicely with Nginx. So the first thing that you need to do is to enable Nginx to connect to your backends, in this case Node.js, if it is working as a reverse proxy, of course. And to do that, you run the command, the first one, set as a bool with the flag minus p to persist, and the boolean name is httpd can network connect and pass the parameter on to turn this feature on. The second as a Linux boolean that we want to set as HTTPD enable home there. So in case if your static files are served from one of the user's home directory, you want to have it on. Otherwise, Nginx will be blocked by SE Linux when it tries to access a file in a user's home directory. Finally, in order to serve the files, you also need to make sure that they have a right context for SE Linux. And to change the context of the file, you run the command chcom minus art for recursive minus t for type and set the type to httpd sys content t and obviously pass the pass to the files that you are planning to serve from nginx few more useful commands when you're working with se linux get enforce will show you if se linux is currently turned on or off Set enforce to 1 will set it to the enforcing mode and set enforce 0 will set it into permissive mode, which will let you diagnose the issue. So for example, if you want to make sure that the problem is indeed caused by SE Linux configuration, you can try setting SE Linux to permissive mode with set enforce 0 and then see if the problem is still there. So if the problem is gone, obviously it's SE Linux that is prohibiting some sort of an access. Finally, don't forget, you can always add a flag uppercase Z to ls and ps commands in order to see the se linux context details for the files or for the running processes thank you very much for watching this was a slightly more advanced subject but good thing is that now you know about se linux more than 99.9 percent .9 of linux users probably so i hope this was a useful video and if you liked it please subscribe to my channel and see you in the upcoming videos bye